thank you actually created a backdrop for each presenter, so we just uh, remembered we had you. So, <laughs> we had well, thank you. So, uh, you had a really radical one. If, uh, we're not positive if you're going to work on this computer, but we'll see if it's very quick. Our IT department is working on it. Occupy Flint. Uh, what uh, what I saw at Occupy Flint were people who were open-minded and uh, were <coughs> looking for uh, technologies that I was interested in, also which are appropriate technologies. And I think this is in line with uh, Zeitgeist. Uh, appropriate technologies are technologies that do not uh, do more harm. That is justifiable to our environment in order to attain the technology and use and mass distribute it. Uh, you know, among these technologies uh, are things that involve uh, water purification, uh, communications, transportation, uh, uh, you know, material production. All of these industries and all of these modes need energy. They need mass amounts of energy in order to perform the work. And so uh, we need energy to uh, heat things, we need energy to see things, we need energy to store and transmit data and images. Uh, this energy will come from somewhere because people are going to have their technology. Uh, what, what, I, uh, what I see is what I saw originally when I first started looking at solar technologies particularly um, was that there was a black uh, out operation in effect. There was a media and governmental and corporate withholding of information on uh, uh, solar technology, the information on how to install it, uh, what is available was basically there, but I hadn't run into it yet. And I got a book that was called The Sun Betrayed. The Sun Betrayed uh, tells stories about uh, municipalities local governments and corporations teaming together to uh, block this technology from being seen by people and adopted as a, as a main source for the electrons that we need to perform a lot of these functions. Um, <clears throat> solar energy comes from uh, the incoming radiation and particles from the sun. This drives all of our wind energy, our hydroelectric energy, and when we use photovoltaics, uh, you know, it comes directly from the sun's uh, ray. And so a uh, geothermal heating is latent solar energy caught in the mass, in the, in the earth. And so we can look at this situation and realize that all of our energy gain at all comes from the sun. And so to turn our backs on this source of energy, which is uh, not exhaustible, uh, not technically exhaustible, although I believe we could absorb enough of it to, to uh, you know, be a negative effect on what the sun does in the machinery of our planet and our solar system. And so, 
the thing is, is to realize that there is mass amounts of energy streaming down from the sky daily. It is in the area of 4 million horsepower per square mile. 4 million horsepower per square mile will surely be enough energy for industry's needs, uh, for residential needs, for uh, you know, uh, production purposes. We can simply look to plants. All of the mass that is raised from the earth, all of the rain that falls uh, is, is driven by the sun. And so I started to look at you know, information and sources, and I found, like I said, this, this black washing, uh, you know, blinders to it, and industry information that basically tells us that solar is not only too expensive, not economically a good uh, solution to any of these problems, it is uh, not able to meet the demands of industry and of our, our you know, residences, our houses, our, the way we live. And so when I saw these stories, ma'am, uh, The Sun Betrayed is an amazing book. Anybody who's interested in uh, you know, this, this aspect of solar, which is the denial of it to people, basically, or at least the uh, slowing down of the transfer into the use of it, especially by private individuals. Uh, these corporations will very much step forward and say, uh, it's good for my plant, for my refrigeration plant, for my water pumping plant, for my uh, you know, heat uh, facility, because we have like mass amounts of uh, solar thermal, which is a much higher efficiency, a much higher gain per surface area, uh, around the area of 50% uh, solar thermal, the conversion uh, efficiency. Conversion efficiency of this technology is basically exotics max out at 20% common, uh, uh, practical, proven technologies, 14%. So 14% of the sunlight that strikes that thing uh, can be turned into energy and then there are losses after that. And so this becomes uh, an issue where if we just go ahead and switch completely over to photovoltaics for most electrical needs, the demand for the materials for those things uh, might outstrip you know, the capability to uh, not only uh, uh, attain it in a manner that is not destructive, um, accumulate toxins and, and uh, uh, you know, toxic materials in one area, destroy, uh, you know, natural settings, it uh, may not be possible to uh, provide that much material. Uh, we're talking aluminum, glass, and silicon, mostly. And so, all everything but the silicon is recyclable in this module. Uh, there are actually schemes to recycle the materials uh, from modules after their lifespan is over in uh, 30 to 75 years. And so 30 to 75 year lifespan on something with no moving parts that can provide all the power uh, that we need for you know, most residential situations uh, is, is a technology that you, know, you would think that when most people looked at that, they would immediately be interested in replacing the way that they do it, which is a lifetime payment plan for every electron you receive from a power company who does not care if they uh, strip land masses clean, uh, change you know the, the landscape in a way that is just horrible and leaves a desert when they're done, concentrate toxic uh, materials in areas and flush them into waters that we cannot uh, then recover, reclaim, or uh, repair. And so, uh, you know, all the things around it are that you know industry is, is willing to use it. Uh, they want to deny you the personal use of it. They're very happy to like uh, rent you this equipment, like a cable box, and allow you to hook it to the grid because it averts this 40% uh, uh, loss between a transmission facility and most people's houses if you're any distance away. There's 40% loss or more. Um, during peak loads, it can be 80% loss. But I guarantee we are all still being charged for that loss. Distributed energy generation is basically uh, uh, the, the key to um, being able to do this in a way that is not necessarily so centralized as the, the corporate uh, would like it to be. And so the transmission losses are less to have it on everybody's house than it is to just have a bunch of them at my house and power my neighbors. And so uh, it is definitely a lot better than the coal and nuclear uh, source of this energy, nuclear reactors in my opinion should be 96 miles away. We have the very best nuclear power reactor ever invented, ever, ever uh, you know, materialized, which is our sun. Our sun provides plenty of this energy to spare. 
Uh, the thing is, is that our appliances that most of us use are much too, uh, much too energy consumptive to uh, apply this technology to without a very large cost and without a very uh, economically and, and environmentally. And so the answer to that is switching to newer, better technologies, again, that uh, you know, I've been withheld for a long time. These flat screen displays are the very best uh, thing that most households can change that will immediately change your, your, your uh, economic situation and your environmental impact. You look at your power bill and something like three cathode ray tubes in a, in a house can account for a third or more of the energy use. And so when we switch to flat screen monitors and do the research, because Energy Star rated appliances are not necessarily uh, what they, uh, again, it's Department of Energy okayed these things, and you know they okayed the nuclear power plants too. And so, um, uh, I don't remember where I was going with that, but the uh, 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 nuclear, the, the industry is very happy to, uh, uh, I lost that one, I'm not a public speaker by any means. Oh yeah, okay, so efficiency and appliances is like one of the very first uh, places to attack and anybody's like plan to switch uh, to renewable energy as a source for power or any power at all. If you hook to the nuclear reactor still there should be a need or a want to uh, enhance the efficiencies of your appliances and so like a, a certification body like uh, Department of Energy for Energy Star rated appliances will certify a washing machine uh, as being efficient, low water consumption, low energy consumption, and uh, long lasting that is relatively short-lived. It um, uses two-thirds more water and twice the electricity of some of the solar industry available washing machines. They're made right here in the United States. Uh, there is like a Staber clothes washer that has no gearbox. It has a V-belt for a transmission of power. And this has a motor with a switch that is very simple on an old-fashioned mechanical uh, type uh, actuator that will, again, give this level of efficiency, which is many times what is available for you know, your $1,200, $1,400, $1,500 a piece side-by-side -side washer and dryer. And so to look at the things that are available in the uh, commercial marketplace as it's presented to us in advertisements and commonly available items, and then to look at the solutions that have been arrived at by people who attempt to operate their households off-grid with solar electricity, because again, this is the um, I don't know how you want to say, uh, to balance your household independently of the grid with uh, this technology is an exercise in the efficiency and elegance of the systems that are designed and installed. Uh, they will either uh, succeed or fail and your actual laundry and uh, you know uh, maybe even uh, communications and uh, information display may be affected. So, uh, it's an incentive to be connected to the outside, to note the weather, to decide when is a good time to do your laundry, to uh, decide how much laundry you really think you need to do. Um, and what this goes back to, again, is appropriate technology. These are all technologies that are available that uh, will need to be switched to an appropriate technology. If we're to move forward at all, solar uh, photovoltaics and um, other solar renewable energies, hydroelectric, wind, uh, and other forms of, uh, you know, and other uh, variants of these technologies will be, they, they absolutely must be the cornerstone of the energy uh, selection. When we look at our environment, when we look at what's available to us as power, the sun is the obvious, uh, the obvious source for it all. And so to deny that and say, okay, we're going to um, produce a material fuel that causes more damage then if they did go ahead and have a nuclear holocaust in uh, uh, the 50s, they need not drop one single bomb on a city on, or inundate a country with nuclear weapons. The damage that has been done by nuclear power to our planet is so widespread, so irreversible at this point that, that there's no point in even doing it because everybody has already been altered and affected and lifespans have been shortened by this being allowed to be at all used to uh, provide power for our industries and homes. And so uh, when we look at the energy pie, uh, nuclear power is at 8%, um, and I've seen different ones, you know, up to like 10 or 15%, but I'm saying around 8%. Uh, 8% 8 8 of the national power uh, is produced by nuclear 
uh, sources. And so the thing that they do not show is how much energy is involved in the production of the materials that build and maintain and supply fuel to a nuclear reactor. It's absolutely the biggest energy consumer, the dirtiest form of energy. These guys want to build 35 more of these things to uphold a consumer industry that doesn't have our best interests in mind. And so when I think of solar, when I think of these gardening projects like uh, Jaron is heavily involved in and I am involved in solar greenhousing projects and organic farming projects, um, I'm looking at this and saying, man, number one, I cannot be on a lifetime payment plan for my power. This is about independence. It's about self-defense. It's about making sure that we survive. It's a survival issue. Not to say that everybody should have one of these, to say that everybody allowing the, the, the current uh, trend and, and direction and way to be a massively destructive, uh, you know, uh, possibly irreversible damage to all of humanity forever. All of the living things on this planet contain nuclear materials from satellites that fall from the sky, from nuclear facilities, all over the country, all over the world, that hundreds of times a year emit toxic uh, plumes of plutonium. There are 40 mile plumes of tritium running underneath uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratories in Tennessee. Uh, the DOE in 1991 was given $500 million to discover how much uh, contamination and widespread uh, movement is going on with these materials from the 14 major nuclear materials production facilities in the country. And they said 500 million dollars a year for a three-year study. We, after the three years, they came back with a report that, dude, we cannot possibly for any amount of money tell you how far and widespread the, the contamination is, What much less like what the, 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 uh, uh, the, what this will lead to, you know? And so, um, again, when I look at it, I look at it as like a, a self-defense and a survival situation where uh, it is like we are on a life raft. And if we are on this life raft, and there's six of us, and one of us is going to uh, eat all of the food for comfort and tear off pieces of the life raft and burn it because he feels a little cold, uh, there is somebody who's going overboard. Somebody is going to be pitched overboard. And it's not going to be me, preferably, because I will choose better. I will not be tearing off pieces of this life raft uh, that I don't need to keep warm. And, uh, you know, so where I go with that, again, is like uh, a demonstration of this is at Occupy Plant, because that's kind of what I'm here actually to talk with uh, part of also. And uh, at Occupy Flint, our power uh, supply is an off-grid power supply. Uh, we have several uh, solar energy systems that are independent of each other. We have backup systems, communication systems, and uh, main house power systems. Uh, our main house power comes from two of these. Uh, our backup system is uh, basically the equivalent of a half of one of these. And our communication system is half again that. And so uh, for a minimal investment, really, uh, we bought four of these things. Four of these things I have designed to uh, power all of the needs of our house. This is four 185 watt modules. It's somewhere around 790 watts solar. 790 watt solar will do all of our well pumping, all of our house lighting, all of our communications. Uh, it will do our heat distribution. And again, a, a topic that, and I wish I would have went into more, is solar thermal. Solar thermal, specifically solar domestic hot water, is the very most cost effective uh, first step approach toward switching your house to a renewable form of uh, energy uh, source for, for its operation. And so uh, the maintenance on these systems is almost nil. You're talking at like 30 years in between any major parts replacement or system modification. And then um, the solar thermal systems possibly could last a couple hundred years. They're copper and aluminum with a glass cover no moving parts in the actual collector. And so you have pumps and thermostats and storage tanks. These are all common items to all of the trades that deal with heating of water and heating of uh, uh, space. And so uh, when I have approached uh, HVAC workers and tradespersons 
they immediately turn away and they're just like, oh no, you know, I don't I have anything to do with that. Or if you actually want to play a fun trick, call one of these guys up and ask them if they want to come over and diagnose your system and fix it. You know, I just bought a house, it's got this solar uh, hot water system, can you come over and take a look at it? Most plumbers will tell you flatly no. Absolutely not. And it's not that there's anything in there that they don't know about or that they don't uh, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, it's just that they don't know that. They, they don't have the, the knowledge of it. And so, uh, again, appropriate technology, leaning mainly on uh, solar forms of energy, uh, or, and, and by that I mean renewable which could include other technologies, some biomass, but obviously we cannot just burn the very earth to keep warm. Uh, and so uh, you cannot do that for very long uh, before there just wouldn't be any soil left. You know? And so to grow these huge fields of fuel crops and then burn them and grow a huge field of fuel crops and burn it will absolutely take the very soil and burn it into a form that was not, no longer usable. Carbon dust is not very usable, uh, you know, unless you're into making bomber planes and stuff. And so I will say, it will remove that statement because it is very useful, but it's not what we want to be left with after we get done taking what we need from the environment. And so um, I have basically only to ask if anybody has any direct questions uh, regarding uh, renewable energy, uh, solar technologies, wind, uh, uh, you know, use of uh, appliances that are appropriate in your home. Uh, I do these things. I consult with organic farmers uh, about um, their, uh, mostly their greenhouse operations, nurseries, hydronic heating for them to keep them warm in the winter, proper structure construction to keep uh, the heat as long as we can, proper orientation to ensure maximum solar gain, and uh, if necessary and where appropriate, solar electricity to power things like circulator pumps, filters for uh, certain types of rain, uh, water, and other water uh, you know, source filtration um, being the main ones. And then this can go all the way to uh, um, you know, electric power machines for use in the garden, which I don't personally use. I do all manual labor. Um, but uh, on an industrial scale, very much uh, heavy machinery or at least light machinery will be used. And so all of these machines, like right now you can get really killer skid steers that are electric, buses, semis, uh, you know, small uh, like bobcats that you stand in and have all the implements, the post hole diggers, the whole bit, everything you can uh, find on a bobcat you can find on these machines. And uh, you can charge your machine with a solar module, you can charge your stomach with the food that you've grown in this uh, uh, operation, and be more independent have an idea and a, a, like a stronger connection to the earth while you use technologies that are available and things, advantages that people have devised to uh, do the needful practical things like uh, feeding, lighting, heating, and housing, uh, manufacturing. A lot of solar manufacturers use 100% solar once they sell enough modules to be able to cover an area in their facility. Uh, these facilities are generally either fully solar powered robotic facilities to produce modules or they are what power they cannot produce from the solar that they have available or the area that they have available they will pay an incentive a premium to other people who will buy modules not necessarily from them uh, or you know wind generation capacity hydroelectric capacity which you know can be machines from you know this big modified car alternators all the way up to, you know, half the size of this room. Uh, the stations at Niagara, the power station is still operating there. I don't think it's ever been shut down for major repairs. Nikola Tesla personally oversaw the installation of that facility. That is a solar energy being used right under everybody's eyes and not being seen. And so uh, this is still one of the largest hydroelectric power facilities, it's very much the most successful, most well-known one. And um, so they will pay an incentive to people who have this technology on whatever scale to pressurize the grid with that power so that they can say that, yeah, we used 100 million kilowatt hours in our facility, but we also bought a similar 100 million kilowatt hours in incentive for other people to produce that and put that on the grid. 
And that is like a, a transitional step. That is a transitional step between where we're at now and uh, actually pulling it off. And so like I said, when it comes to me, the appropriate technology theme comes down to self-defense and survival. And I think that, um, again, it'll be a cornerstone in, the, uh, in, in, in any uh, forward movement. Uh, uh, unfortunately, sustainability has been hijacked. Sustainability, the term, uh, even the uh, appearance of individuals who are into sustainability has been uh, uh, co-opted and converted into something that is negative, that is against you. And they're actually using this theme and people's desire to change for regulatory purposes. And uh, we'll see where that goes from there. And I've just been told we're ready for some other thing. And so uh, I'm glad he stopped me because. I have a real quick question. Sure. How much does this panel cost, and how much would a moderate uh, solar thermal system cost? Right. Well, the panel is going to be about 1500 This module right here retails around 550 somewhere in the area, uh, when I bought it a year ago. And so. Installed? Oh, no. Uh, installed, you're looking at $6 a watt. Average household would need probably 2,500 watts for, you know, and I'm not saying average consumption, there's no real average consumption, that's like 900 kilowatt hours a month is the number they give. And so if you were to take that number, you'd find $80,000 as your installed price. But that's why I go back to the appliances, yeah, appropriate tech, yeah. That's really affordable. Oh yeah, yeah, and so we can bring this cost down to around $20,000 by having an appropriately designed home with uh, efficient appliances and efficient heat. And then the very uh, uh, direct next question was solar thermal. And so your average solar domestic hot water system is around $3,500 um, installed. And again, the system will last probably 30 years with no major, I, I go to systems, I actually install solar uh, photovoltaics for a living. In the past, I did solar thermal. And so, uh, in the solar thermal, I would go into houses that had 30-year-old systems and needed a controller, 100 bucks. Needed a pump, 200 bucks. And so you're talking, you know, and again, we've been told that this is too expensive. This is not in your best interest. Let me own the solar panels and you can just pay me a premium because I'm making you renewable energy. And so uh, a solar thermal system to heat uh, 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 a house, I mean, you could just like multiply that uh, uh, by, you know, a larger factor. So say uh, six solar thermal, and we're talking hydronics, they can be like uh, air heaters or water heaters generally. Uh, the water heat, uh, heating method, hydronics, are more efficient and more controllable distribution and storage of the heat that you gather. And so uh, I will push for hydronics, but where it's appropriate, air heating. And um, so when we take solar rays and heat mass with it and then store that mass and then impinge that mass on another material to raise its temperature, we have, uh, again, the highest level of control and the highest level of conversion efficiency and storage efficiency. And so, um, even for retrofits, this is not saying you have a house that's built, you know, out of uh, SIPs or is like spray foam insulated and heavily modified or, you know, again, purpose built, uh, you know, super low energy consumption type home. And so, uh, yeah, that, that should, you know, 3,500 for a solar domestic hot water system, you're looking at probably like 15,000. In this region, heat is a major load on any house. Uh, everybody can look at their gas bills probably. If you're, I'm guessing you guys are all Michiganders, you've seen your gas bill lately, your, your heating bill. Some of us, you'll use wood, but again, this refers back to, we cannot just burn every piece of everything we find and think that this is a, a, a decent survival uh, strategy. And if anybody else had a question, excellent. And if not, I, I think maybe we have a time issue yeah, to. Yeah, everybody, but if anybody else has questions, you're here for a little bit, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah just come up to them, ask them uh, on your own time. And, uh, so, round of applause for information.